So let me start with uh, head coverings first. And um, just something, in, uh, as you turn to 1 Corinthians uh, 11, I want you to think about Corinth itself. Corinth was a mixed up place. Um, if you know anything about the city of Corinth, I've mentioned it in times past, it was a seaport town. It was a crossroads, main, the Ignatian way it's called, one of the largest uh, highways of the ancient world that, that in its ex extreme end would go all the way to India and China. And at the other end, it ended up at Rome. And so it was one of the greatest superhighways, land highways. And then Corinth also had the sea route where you could take a shortcut that saved three days between Egypt and Rome by putting your boat in at Corinth, dragging it over the isthmus, which took just a few hours of slave labor, and then onward. And so it was just the hub. So Corinth was a place of a lot of immorality. Uh, if you remember in 1 Corinthians 5, uh, the fella was living with his stepmother in sexual sin which even pagans didn't do. Uh, in, in earlier in 1 Corinthians 11, people are getting, um, or later in the chapter, I mean, people are getting drunk at communion. So, I mean, those are two unusual things. Uh, drunk at the Lord's Supper, and uh, that wouldn't be incest. What would it be? It would, well, whatever, perversion for a man to be living with his stepmother uh, is really bad. And so, uh, these people, though, were in the church. And they had a lot, I mean, in 1 Corinthians 6, they're suing each other. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 8, they're, they're spending time with things offered to idols and to demons. And, uh, you know, they had all the, the divorce thing going on. In fact, there were three groups of people in the Corinthian church. Uh, there were the married, there were the virgins, which is code for never married, and then there were the unmarried. So there was a whole group of divorced people in the Corinthian church. And so, I mean, just looking at this, this is, is enough. There was trouble going on in the church, but off the coast of Corinth was an island between the Isthmus and modern-day Turkey. Uh, you know, off the coast of Turkey, right close to the coast is Patmos, but a little bit further out in the water off of Greece was an island called Lesbos. Now that should sound like something you've heard of. That's the island where lesbians are from. It's where lesbianism was first classified as lesbianism. It's where women married women. So people were coming to Corinth from that island. Uh, people were getting saved from that background of females. Uh, they were kind of like Amazons. You ever heard of Amazons? You know, these warrior women. Um, the, the people of Lesbos, the women, used to hunt wild boars. And they would hunt them by hand with a knife and chase them and attack them and kill them with a knife. I mean, they were quite prone to being leaders, you know? Uh, any woman that would chase a wild pig and kill it with a knife is outspoken, I would say, at the least, you know. And so all these people, um, all of these people arrived in Corinth. And so they were, they were living in a city that, that was dedicated to the, to the goddess of immorality. Uh, in fact, Corinth, the word Corinth, became synonymous with fornication. People would say they're Corinthianizing. And so just imagine people with all this stuff and now go to, to chapter 11. Um, it starts out in verse 1, imitate me just as I also, uh, chapter 11 of 1 Corinthians, as I imitate Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things um, and keep the traditions just as I delivered them to you. So right away, uh, Vaughn was asking about, is it just a local custom? Are these traditions just... No, Paul is saying, you are, you are carrying on what I taught you. In fact, he says in Romans, uh, as well as in uh, 1 Thessalonians, that if you don't keep the traditions taught, you're supposed to be excluded from the church. So these were not cultural. They were binding on other churches, not just on the church in Corinth. But now look at verse 3. And, and this is the only way to understand this, and you have to get a, a succession of things here. I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ. So 
he starts out with the men, and he said, over the man is Christ. Okay, so the head, the one that is over him. Um, the head of every man is Christ, and the head of woman is man. So what he's saying is that, that we have roles. Um, Christ, Christ is over a man. The man is to be the head over the woman. Now, does Christ boss us around? Does he discriminate against us? Is he harsh and cruel and demanding and selfish? This has nothing to do with uh, sitting around smoking a water pipe like the Middle Eastern cultures and men doing nothing all day long and the women carrying refrigerators on their heads and grinding the grain. This is not, it is not I'm the boss and you're not. This is a hierarchy of authority, of role. Now, now keep reading. Um, Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonors his head. But every woman who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head. Now, what, what head are we talking about there? It, see, immediately, did you notice that it says the head of the man is Christ. The head of the woman is the man. There, there he is speaking of this authority structure. And so, uh, if a woman prays or prophesies with her head uncovered, she dishonors her head. Just as one and the same as her head were shaved. Where did shaving come from now? From there. The women of Lesbos associated themselves with the movement by shaving their heads. Because they wanted everyone to see them in this liberated way. And so shaved head women who were Amazonian wild boar killers had moved to Corinth and some of them were in Christ and in chapter 11 Paul is saying don't go back to your old ways. Don't uh, act like you used to act or why don't you if you do just go shave your head like you used to be. Okay, so, I mean, a lot of understanding this, you have to understand, you remember everything, you can't interpret the Bible by saying, this word means this, and so it always means that in this, con- in this chapter. No, context, you always, everything in the Bible, interpretation is based on the context of the passage. You do not bring, um, you do not force into the passage something that the passage, the context of the passage does not teach. Keep going. Verse 7. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, since he is the image and glory of God. But the woman is the glory of man. For man is not from woman, but woman from man. Now we've got a whole new, I mean, we're going from this headship thing. Now we're talking about created order. 